Okay, so moving on to the portfolio pathway. Now, this is a more um, recognized or what do you say? People take this up um, more often than not because um, many people have come, many people join um, ophthalmology in UK as what we call as trust grade doctors or specialty doctors. So typically you would have had, you would have had more than two and a half uh, years of experience and you're not eligible for entering into OST. So what can you do? So you UK recognizes um, specialty doctors um, who have come from abroad, uh, but they do know that they are very well qualified and they can, they actually do have the competency to become a consultant. Uh, now what they have come up with is something called the portfolio pathway, wherein you have to demonstrate that you are an equally competent candidate as somebody who has completed OST. So how can you demonstrate that? So you basically need to do the same thing what OST candidates do. So whatever is there in their cur so curriculum. So the most important thing is to be fully aware of the CCT curriculum. The curriculum has changed now in 2024, but you need to be fully aware of what all uh, CCT candidates or what all um, postgraduate students do in the UK. So it's com it's very different to India. We have a lot of procedures which need to be signed off. Um, not only cataract surgery, but several other things we need to assist, we need to do, we need to, there's a minimum number of things we need to um, achieve before um, getting into um, before becoming a consultant. So, and in each subspeciality, there are learning outcomes um, associated with it. So these, um, these learning outcomes are part of your CCT curriculum. And if you want to do the Caesar pathway, the first thing is you need to be fully aware of what the postgraduate syllabus is or what the curriculum is. Now, what you can do is um, you can start gathering all the evidence by yourself. Um, in whatever post you're currently at. So if you join as a doctor in a hospital uh, in the UK, um, you can be supported by your local consultants um, to have that particular training. So you can always request your local consultants to help you with your application to become a consultant. So basically what this means is in the last in the preceding five to seven years before you submit your application, you need to show that you have gathered all the uh, competencies similar to that of a person who is uh, finishing OST. So 80% of your um, evidence should be from the last five years, but your evidence will be calculated from the last seven years before your application. So if you're an IMG, you need obviously a foundation training. So that's typically 12 months internship. So we did all 12 months internship. After that, you need to dev, you need to have um, specialty training in the UK. So you need to under, you need to rotate through um, the different subspecialities, uh, gain evidence of whatever knowledge, skills, surgical experience, laser experience, equivalent to a UK trained ophthalmologist. So that's really important. Then you make your application to GMC with uh, that's called the Caesar application. GMC will go through your application, will assess your evidence, will see if your evidence matches that of a UK trained consultant. And if it is, um, if it is evidence enough, if you're successful, you can become a consultant. Now, um, here the, the catch is that you're doing this on your own. You're not doing it under a structured program. OST is a structured post-graduation, uh, post-graduate program where you are naturally taken through different hospitals and you are put in through different training programs. You need a particular requirement. So it's very structured. In Caesar, it's not as structured as OST, but you have to take this up on your own. So it requires quite a lot of um, dedication, motivation, and you need to be very, very organized. There is something called as OLT, which is Ophthalmic Local Training. Um, I'll just share something which I found. I'll send the link for this. Um, you must go through this if you're seriously looking at Caesar because it's a very, very nice way of getting into, of um, getting your Caesar's application successful. Now, typically Caesar applications are very exhaustive. There are more than a thousand pages, um, but there is another uh, very, very good um, 
uh, document, a specialty specific guidance. Um, it's the G it's a GMC document. It's very exhaustive. It's uh, almost fifty pages, but this guidance is to help those who are applying via this um, the portfolio pathway. So that's really really important. This document you should be um start to end you should be very very aware of whatever because every word is really important if you're looking at the portfolio pathway the key evidence is uh, apart from your clinical and surgical work is again just like your ost um uh, submission you need multi source feedbacks you also need patient feedback so when you're working in the uk just try to get good uh, patient feedbacks as much as possible um obviously you need to have a logbook once you come to the uk it's always good to um become a member of the royal college of ophthalmologists which gives you access to the e logbook um and gives you access to the e portfolio and that's a very very easy way of logging your work so um w uh, wb is a workplace based assessments so anything you do in the uk like let, let's say you've discussed a case with a consultant that gets considered as something called a case based discussion if you do something like an ultrasound or you do something like a biopsy of a lid lesion um those things get counted as workplace based assessments then there's something called an appraisal which is done every year um you need to have appraisals every year you need to document your appraisals so take them seriously and um, you need to submit this every year your appraisals need to be submitted to the um, gmc for evidence you need to do an audit every year ideally you should complete the audit cycle you need to actively take part in any form of research uh, so local hospitals if they taking they you generally hospitals will have some research which is going on be active uh, participate in it teaching and training again as dhanushri said you need to be part of a weekly or a regular teaching program helping junior trainees or medical students or something um that that's really important uh there are some important courses which the gmc wants you to undertake so management in the nhs teach the trainer or training the trainers knowing uh, gmc's good clinical practice is a very important course so there are three or four courses which need to be undertaken as a minimum uh, to show that you are up to date or you are following gmc's good medical practice guidelines so that's really important everything is there on that document i think that's it uh, this is just a broad overview so uh, good luck to everybody who's um, who's trying and uh, yeah you can always uh, take my email address and have uh, you can ask any questions you would like yeah Thank you, thank you so much, Priya. This was uh, very uh, in depth, and I think you covered everything right from the training pathway to the portfolio pathway. Now, one more question that I want to ask you personally, and I'm sure the viewers must be interested to know as well. Uh, what is your, uh, you know, take on the UK training? Uh, how do you think it's different from uh, your MS in India? So the post graduation in UK is very, very, very different from that in India. Firstly, um. the time it's 7 years in uk it's 3 years in india that basically translates into indian training um being very intense so whatever you're cramming you're cramming it in 3 years this is my personal experience it was quite stressful um 3 years i feel is it was i did not come out as let's say a confident ophthalmologist whereas in the uk um 7 years is a very um long time it gives you very good depth and breadth of knowledge not only surgical laser but clinically you you you, you do end up um seeing a lot um it's the it's a very structured program so everything is um documented very well the curriculum is a national curriculum which is followed throughout the country um in ms uh, we did have more or less a curriculum but um i'm not too sure if it is followed entirely uh, throughout the country and there's no uniformity um, there's no uniformity whereas in uk um every deanery every um so in the uk the uh, post graduation is carried out by hospitals which are under particular geographical region so they are called deaneries so i am in wessex deanery which is in the south east of england similarly you have various different deaneries like i think dhanashree is in the cambridge deanery which is the east of england so uh, england is england scotland northern ireland wales we're all divided into different geographical regions and you carry out your 
uh, training in these um, deaneries, so geographic deaneries. Um, and all of them have the same curriculum. So it's a very uniform uh, thing. So when you know somebody has got a CCT, um, you know that they have gone through all this particular standard structured training. Whereas in India, MS, um, I'm, I, I can't be very sure, but um, I think it differs from university to university. So um, that's one difference. Um, uh, the the sign offs that so when you're going through all the rotations they are very long rotations almost six months to one year in each subspeciality so it gives you a very good depth and breadth of knowledge you get ample time to choose what subspeciality you want to do now the training the new curriculum is different wherein you can actually pursue subspeciality training within the seven years so the last two years is subspeciality training. You can choose a subspeciality. Like I'm interested now in glaucoma. So I want to do glaucoma as a fellowship. So I can do it as part of my um, training in the last two years. I do not have to apply for a separate fellowship. Training is good enough within your last two years of um, OST. You may not need to do a fellowship after that. So that's that's very helpful. The other thing is uh, the sign off. So in each subspeciality, we require to do a minimum number or we need to do um, particular procedures or we need to see particular cases. Um, so that, um, that strictness and mandatory number of things we need to do or num number of things we need to see in each subspeciality um, uh, that, that's very good because there are there were many things I did not do in India, um, whereas I need to do it as part of a mandatory thing in UK. And it's very helpful to become an independent doctor, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think I think the the way it's structured is really nice. The other thing is the keep exam. Comparing, uh, sorry to interrupt you. People keep comparing the number of cases that we see back home versus what we see in yeah. the UK. Do you think that's a problem for you? Do you notice that, uh, you know, are you perhaps seeing less cases or doing less surgeries numbers wise in the UK compared to what you did back home? No. Okay. So number wise, it's very different. In UK, if you have a CCT, you have done a minimum 350. That's a requirement. Correct. So you actually end up doing a lot of surgeries in the UK independently. Like they make you, the last two years are like a trial for a consultant job, right? So they make you um, ease into a consultant job very, very easily. The last two years you do independent lists, you do high volume lists. Um, so actually you get to do a lot of cases, even complex cases, which I think in India you might do as a senior resident, not as a PG. Correct. Not only cataract surgery, but a lot of other surgeries like oculoplastic surgeries, uh, glaucoma surgeries, we do as a resident rather than as a fellow. So it's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I think that that's a huge plus point. Obviously, I should mention that the pathology is different from country to country. Now, obviously, in India, we see a lot of infective keratitis, like we see a lot of infective corneal ulcers, whereas you don't see that much here. So obviously, geographically, there are differences in the uh, case presentations and all. Um, but like in India, we see a lot of ocular TB. We don't see that here. So it depends what we are looking at, what we are comparing. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I would say I've definitely learned a lot after coming to the UK and especially in training, things are very structured and uh, whatever I see is documented. I discuss with a consultant, it goes on my portfolio. So it's very uniform. And um, I think that that's, that's a huge plus point. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Priya. And uh, if there's anything else that, uh, you know, the viewers need to ask you, um, they will get in touch with you via email. So thank you for that as well. Anything yeah. else you want to add? No, so I don't have, just want to tell the viewers that I don't have any um, commercial or financial interests in anything. These are all my personal views, my um, my understanding. Um, obviously, everything needs to be cross-checked with the websites, which are there on the uh, GMC websites, the college websites. Things might have changed or they might change in the future. So it's really important to be up to date. I will share the links um, with Dhanashree. And um, yeah, so there might, please excuse if there are, there are certain things which I have said, which could be um, 
outdated or which could be mistaken so just have a look for yourself before um, taking in what i have done is just a brief overview and a guide of how to become a consultant um but yes the ultimate um, authority on all, all the knowledge is there in the um on the website so please check that out before before heading into anything else <laughs> all right thank you so much priya thank you for doing this and uh, i hope we meet soon yeah thank you so much and thanks for all the viewers um and thank you dhanashree for giving me this opportunity uh, any queries please feel uh, free to pop in an email to me thank bye. you thank bye you. bye <laughs> bye so folks if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button do share this video with someone who may find it helpful i'll see you in my next video and until then take care